Six days to go until the general election. Boy, we are doing well. How do I know? The level of attacks. To begin, they've dug out a statement from me 10 years ago saying I thought there'd be a war in Ukraine, that we've made some terrible errors of expanding NATO and the European Union. Well, I was right. They were all wrong. But funny, isn't it? That now gets conflated into I support President Putin, which I never have. I've always thought he's a very, very bad and dangerous person. That was the beginning. That was the beginning of the real pushback against the Reform UK vote, against the momentum that is happening out there in the country. Oh, by the way, I was opposed to the Iraq war, which finished up killing hundreds of thousands of civilians. I was opposed to the Libyan war, which led to the creation of ISIS and the boats crossing the Mediterranean. Some of those people now coming across the English Channel. The establishment always, always, always fight against me because you know what? I get it right a lot more than they do. And now we get the most incredible saga over the last 24 hours. A so-called Reform UK activist turns up in the Clacton office last Saturday, goes out with an undercover, apparently, Channel 4 news team and makes a series of very, very racist derogatory remarks about Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, about people crossing the channel who he wants to shoot, about turning every mosque into a Weatherspoons. I mean, I watched this stuff. I thought, this is just so over the top. No one speaks like this. This is like an Alf Garnet comedy sketch going back 50 years. Uh, and yet, overnight, we found out that the guy is an actor. So we called him this morning. The Daily Telegraph called him this morning. He denied being an actor. After a short period of time, he admitted to other media outlets that he was an actor. And then we found his own website where he speaks and advertises his services for adverts, for acting, whatever else it may be. And he describes himself as being very well spoken, but he has an alter ego. He can do what he calls rough talk, all right? Now, when he turned up in the office in Clacton last Saturday, I was there at the desk working. He turned up and it was proper call blimey governor, right? He was playing the alter ego. He was acting and not being himself from the moment he arrived. Then he goes out by coincidence on a canvassing team with an undercover reporter from Channel 4. We've also discovered over the course of the day that on another website, he advertises his services for doing undercover filming. I mean, you literally, this is, this is like Netflix. You literally couldn't make this up. Now, we went back to Channel 4, questioned who this guy was, the veracity of what he was saying and what role he was, he was, he was, he was positioning himself. And Channel 4, interestingly, denied that he was an actor. And yet... We've now found out he's done acting parts in the past for Channel 4. Can you see how the evidence is mounting up? Now, what I don't know is whether he was paid to do this or whether he volunteered to do this. That part of it, we just don't know. What I do know is that this is a stitch up on the most astonishing scale. And think about it. An activist for a party not a candidate who holds no position whatsoever, makes the front page of the Times newspaper. The Prime Minister responds to say how awful he feels for his two daughters about this racist remarks that were made about his family. Folks, this is the biggest stitch-up I've ever seen in my life. And I bet you there's even more we're going to find out. Even more will come out over the course of the next couple of days. Well, you know what? You only start taking flak, as they used to say in Bomber Command in World War II, when you're getting near the target. And we're getting near the target. The establishment are literally terrified of us. Terrified, not just of us breaking into Parliament and getting a bridgehead. Not just terrified of me being the voice of opposition to a very weak Starmer government, which it will be. And hey, the divided Conservatives couldn't possibly provide anything like that. What they're really scared of is what I've said over the next five years, I intend to build a mass movement of millions across this country for real change. And they know, they know that I could do it. They know that we could do it. And they're terrified because they know that would have an unstoppable momentum. Everything about British politics, the electoral system, the parties, the media is designed for nothing to change. 
Starmer taking over from Sunak. That's not a change of government. It's a change of management. And all the deep-seated problems that we face will continue and, in fact, probably get worse. What we're about is a strong, positive vision for this country, its future, the way we educate our kids to give people a chance to get off benefits and go to work and be better off, to genuinely control our borders, to leave the ECHR, to stop people literally taking the mickey out of this country to stop the population explosion that is going on through mass migration and devaluing everyone's life. We have got a radical plan to change this country for the better. And you know what? The vested interests want to stop us. All of this appalling, dishonest behaviour that I've seen against us, our people and indeed me makes me even more determined to succeed next Thursday. And if you can see what's there in front of you, then please join the revolt.